couple of hours to the daytime, where the Nigerian Super Eagle will be facing desert forces of Algeria by 8 p.m. That will be happening live over there in Oran, Algeria. And it's going to be a tough one. You just have to look at uh, the two teams. They've met about 21 times. Super Eagles have uh, faced desert forces in a friendly in Oran today. After, out, out of the 21 times, they've actually won nine times apiece. And you have uh, three draws there. Talking about the two teams, nine times they've uh, actually won both sides. And they've also draw three times. Well, good one out there for the two teams will be fighting hard to see who will actually win this particular friendly. It's more than friendly right now because Nigerians are going to see what will the Super Eagles play uh, against the Desert Foxes of Algeria. We'll be looking at this particular uh, story alongside Ibrahim Yusuf and also Feromi Omoni from Lagos. Good to have you, Ibrahim Yusuf. Always nice to be here. Good you? one. Yeah. You look uh, sharp. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I look sharp too. Right? <laughs> you, always, you always look sharp. <laughs> good one there. Now, Omoni, Ferrami, if you are there. Well, nice one there. Good to have you. Okay, well, it seems uh, oh, Network uh, is not uh, actually our friend there. Let's quickly run in with Ibrahim in the studio. Ibrahim, Nigeria will be facing Algeria. Mm -hmm. Well, if you remove the AL and the NI, mm -hmm. the two of them are Algeria, Algeria. <laughs> A big one, a big mm. fight. Well, it is a big one. And um, I, I think uh, lots of Nigerians are actually coming in this with, uh, with some high expectations. Unfortunately, some of those expectations have been doused a little bit, um, considering the fact that um, the Eagles actually drew 2-2 two -two with uh, the Team B. And um, that, that has given us a more realistic look at what the Eagles are actually going to do. We, we were supposed to be in a rebuilding process, you know, after the debacle of the not being able to qualify for the World Cup. We're expecting something to see some, some changes being made to the Eagles in terms of personnel, playing style, and the rest of them. We have a new manager. We should be able to see some new faces coming into the fray. Unfortunately, from what we're seeing so far, it's, it's, it's more of the same, re really. And um, I really don't ex expect any miracles to happen, considering the fact that we're playing with the same personnel, using mm -hmm. probably the same tactics and everything like that. So I don't think um, we expect, I, I expect that much to change. Algeria is a very strong side. If they're able to bring in their A game, I don't think the Nigerians can be able to handle them, the current Super Eagles that we have. But we need to see something different. We need to see something different from the Eagles, because from what we have seen so far, it's really not encouraging. It's not encouraging at all. And these are not the Eagles that we want to see. These are not the Eagles that are going to take um, Nigeria football back to where it's supposed to be. Because right now we're on the decline. No matter how we try to sugarcoat it, Nigerian football is on the decline when you talk about the Super Eagles. And we need something quick to change. We need something to change quick. And we need to see some, a prospect of something better from the Eagles. Unfortunately, we're not seeing it now. Uh, and uh, uh, coupled with the fact that we play draw mm -hmm. against the team B, Nigerians were like, okay, if you say, oh, let's agree that we play against team B, but with our one of our best squad. Exactly. It's only maybe four of them. Uh, even if Musa were to be around, he wouldn't play. Mm. Maybe just uh, a fringe uh, captain, you mm. know. Uh, Balogun, Ekong, mm. Onyeku. Onyeku might not even made the cost. So, so if, even if these guys were around, what difference could they have made? Yes, that's why. Okay, team? now, it's only maybe, let's say, Osime. Mm. That is missing in the, at the top nine there. Yeah, that you and say could actually make a big difference. A big difference exactly. because he, he always, he's, he's always trying to at mm. least uh, distinguish himself. But really, these are our best squad for now. Mm. And we play 2-2 two -two with Team B, B of Algeria. Algeria. Exactly. They scored first, remember, mm. exactly. before we mm. managed. We to do so. Now, looking at this game tonight, mm. like you said, you're not too sure if we can win this game. Well, I'm, I'm, really not, sure. I'm really not confident. I'm really not confident at all, going by what we have seen so far, what we've known what the Eagles are actually play and what they're playing right now. I really don't see us getting a positive result. I think maybe if we can be able to get a draw, then I think we'll not be embarrassed <laughs> that much. <laughs> what kind of draw? Will, well, will it be uh, nil-nil? Any, any kind of draw. Let it be any draw. kind of draw. At least draw. I think that will be a positive result for us mm. because I think at the end of the day, we'll get beat. If we play the way that we've played before, or should I say the way we have been playing recently, definitely we're going to get beat. And if we're able to get a draw, I think that is a very, very positive result. But even though, but I, I, I for some reason, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not being unpatriotic here. I think a defeat will do us good. I really think a defeat will do us good. Really, I understand yeah, where you are coming I think from. A defeat because will do us good because if we win now, yes, we'll, we'll be think, like, oh, the where team, they've come. Yeah, they've exactly, we have arrived, so we don't need to do we don't need to do much. We're just there, so we just keep maintaining this space, which is not good enough. But if we go out there and we really get beat by Algeria, I think it is the opportunity for us to really realize that we are in trouble. 
you know, that the Eagles are in trouble and we need to do something drastic to be able to save the Eagles from the downward spiral that they are currently on right now because they are on the downward spiral. When and you mention downward spiral, really, it's really going so fast because mm -hmm. uh, if we managed to play that particular friendly against Team B and now uh, I'm sure the, the main team of Algeria will be like, okay, at least if they could draw mm. that game, we should do everything possible to make sure we surprise them by beating them. Exactly. We've met 21 times. Mm. We won nine apiece. We won nine apiece. Mm. They won nine. We won nine. We drew three. Mm. And now we are meeting again to see who actually has an edge. An edge, exactly. And from the way we see it now, if we are to win this game and we are thinking we have actually arrived, We've come for a long time with that, oh, we can beat anyone. Mm. But if we lose, that will be like an eye-opener. Exactly. That, yes, yeah, that really, the, this I team are going that down. Is, that is the wake-up call that we actually need to be able to do the drastic things that need to be done in order for the Eagles to get back to where they're supposed to be. Because right now, we're not getting it right. We're really not getting it right. We're just doing the same thing over again and expecting different results, which is not the... We're playing with the same people. These are the same person, the same guys that failed to qualify us for the World Cup that got beat and failed to qualify us for the World Cup. These are the same guys that are playing now. We're playing almost the same tactics that we've been playing that has not been working. You understand? We said Raw couldn't cut it. We, we, we cut him loose. And then we brought somebody who's doing virtually the same thing. So what's the point? Why not leave Raw to go and do whatever it is he was doing before? You know, because this person, this guy, he's not doing anything. We need to see a revolution. We need to see something change. different. Something has to give, something different from what we have been seeing so far. Unfortunately, we're not seeing it. So we're just going to continue going like this, papering over those cracks and believing that some miracle is going to happen. And one day that these guys are just going to realize, okay, fine, let's give it our best and pray for Nigeria. We have a fantastic group of players. We have very good individual players. Unfortunately for us, we do not have a team. And I really don't think this manager is the right person that is going to put that team together for us to do what is required. Well, we'll be hearing from Ibrahim Yusuf concerning the Nigerian match that will come up between Nigeria and also against uh, Algeria. But let's see, let's go to Lagos as we link with uh, Omoni Yolua Ferrami to give us his own side of how he actually rates uh, Super Eagles against Algeria. Omoni, the match will be starting by 8 p.m. And Nigerians can't wait to see, is there any development or better, let me say, any uh, impact coming from OZP Zero? Because uh, from Ibrahim, he says it's like nothing different from Ghana Law. Uh, in fact, it's like the same thing we are doing. So right now, do you think uh, we can actually manage tonight to win? Um, thank you very much, Adi Look at the way um, the team and Ossie Pochelli might not be able to do much because of the injury striking the team. However, um, your chances for, for him to get you to, to drop um, what, you, what you have been using in the last um, four matches. Now, the problem I saw is that often Mm. Our trainer, we had several other coaches who had um, played the great work in chef, but we still yet to get that top notch quality player uh, to experience from um, this uh, last two goalkeepers we, 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 that, uh, that we had, which was Sheikh Ali coach. So I think that's kind of big for Algeria. Now, if you look at this game, they are very, you know, they are married to a very So that, that for me cannot be the issue. We're playing with two 
removed out of the house of contract, that thing is a new thing, that road is in Ghana. Good one coming from Omoni there. But uh, I saw the game between uh, Nigeria and the Team B. And one particular incident actually caught my eyes. That has to do with uh, Maduka Okoye's howler. Uh, it was not an expected uh, goalkeeping style from uh, such a professional. In fact, a schoolboy wouldn't do such an error where you held the ball and you kept pushing till your opponent came down. You wanted to catch the ball and that was it in the net, at the back of the net. And it really, for the caliber of a player which Maduka Okoye is, that uh, particular howler, I still don't understand what went wrong with him. Uh, was it that he underrated? Or was, it, was, it, was it taking it like a play or a joke or what? Uh, kind of uh, Nigerians were not too happy and I'm sure uh, the, our goalkeeper trainer should work on that. And looking at uh, Uzoho too that is there, we saw what happened here in Abuja where uh, when they were playing against Ghana, that goal that actually caused us trouble. What happened? It seems our goalkeeping department is really not having a, a feel of the day. It's not too kind of cool for us. And the new the, the, the uh, goalkeeper who is actually having his uh, first call up, that's Adeyinka, Adeni from Israel. Maybe they should test him and see if he can do something. Then why do why do we keep using them, uh, playing them rather? Why do we keep playing them when we know that Okoye has not had any uh, top-notch games in Watford, and also we know that okay, Cy uh, Cyprus League where he plays Omonia Nicosia, we don't see him all just to be able to analyze what he's doing. Why do we, we have a lot of goalkeepers? Must we always stick with these guys if they cannot give us what we want? After all, we have 20 teams in Nigeria. We have other goalkeepers that play abroad. They are not the only two goalkeepers that we have. And they too, remember, they also started one day. You said you believe in experience. Okoye was given a chance to start one day. So Adeyinka should also be given a chance. Let's see what he can do. If he cannot justify it, then we know that, okay, let's put the two basket there.
Okay, uh, Amoni, uh, uh, well, we want to appreciate you because for our time. Uh, well, before I let you go, just uh, give us like uh, a go the goals margin you expect from Nigeria versus Algeria. <laughs> Everybody is careful. Mm. A draw. Who knows? Maybe maybe you and Ibrahim had a meeting before we actually came on, on, on air. He also said draw. But, well, that would be nice if you can get a draw. Okay, well, we want to appreciate you, Omoni Yolua Feromi from Lagos, for your contribution on the program as Nigerian face of Algeria in an international friendly. Thank you very much, Omoni. Now, uh, Ibrahim, you just said what he said and actually made the explanation because, the, because we, if we watched that game, that it was a big error from Maduka Okoye, mm. Uzoho. I don't understand. It seems after uh, Peter Rufai, Iker Shirumu, Vincent Eyama, we've not had it easy mm. with the goalkeeping department of Nigerian Super Eagles. has always been this, trying this, try that. Just and, to and, see, and it's and, not working. Unfortunately, these guys that you just mentioned were actually fantastic mm. during their period, during their time with the Eagles. And um, we thought we, we actually found a solution in um, Kali Kemi when he came uh, in. If not for the uh, yeah, came unfortunately, um, he, he, he's, he's not doing very well at the moment. So, so the problem is if you're not good enough, you're not good enough. It's just simple. And we need to understand that. If these guys are not good enough, get rid of them, get somebody else. I have, as I've said a lot, lots of times, uh, this is an opportunity for us. We're not going to the World Cup. Mm. This is an opportunity for us to rebuild. Try out new players. 
if you don't you shouldn't get scared if you go out there you get beat four five six seven nil at least if you can be able to discover one new person that can do something different for you it is a win-win it is a win situation for you because that is what you want we're not out there for the results we're out there to see what the eagles can do and we're out there to see something different from them these guys are not good enough it's simple we all understand that we're instead of experience and whatnot well, we had players who have made their debut at 16 and they, and they cut it because they were good enough these guys are not Yes, top class goalkeepers, the, the, the gears of this world and whatnot, what they do when they make howlers, but how, f how, how frequent are these howlers? Mm. When you have a Madika Okoye or Francis Ozoho between the sticks, you are guaranteed at least one howler a game, which can either be costly or not. It's just so, uh, so very... get rid of these guys, bring in new guys, try them out, and from there we can be able to do something worthwhile. Well, we've been talking concerning Super Ego Star. They'll be facing Desert Fox so for Algeria by 8 p.m. Can they do it? Looking at our goalkeeping department as one of the worst area that we don't have uh, a good goalkeeper that can beat our chest. Uh, gonna those days when easily, when you talk about Nigeria, you have rest of that, okay, goalkeeper settled. But right now, it's no longer the same, right? We don't even know who among them can actually stand as our best goalkeeper. They are almost uh, having the same style of committing one howler or the other. Well, we hope they will be able to salvage a draw if they can. I will be glad that they can actually get a draw for Nigeria. Well, we expect uh, maybe something good from Super Eagles tonight. While we're doing that, let's quickly run through some uh, transfer stories before we wrap it up. Uh, Barcelona and Liverpool are interested in swapping Memphis Depay and Roberto Firmino. Uh, that will be the story. Uh, we just uh, have to totally jump to ba uh, transfer stories. Uh, Barcelona and Liverpool are interested in swapping uh, Memphis Depay and Roberto Firmino. You look at that story and be like, is it possible? Well, it is very possible. Yeah, well, it is very possible um, that something like that could happen. Um, a lot of people are believing that uh, Firmino has actually reached what, at the peak that he can in Liverpool and probably a move might do, might do very well for him. And of course, I mean, we all know the Memphis' situation in Barcelona. He, mm. he actually needs to move. They need to move him on and, and the rest of it. So I think it could turn out to be a very good um, uh, a swap deal for both of them because both of them are they're great players, brilliant players. So I don't think anybody is trading down once, once, once you do, if you do something like that. It would be nice if they can swap. Let's see how it's going to be. Maybe by January, you could be see a swap from Barcelona and Liverpool. And we're talking about Newcastle United considering £50 million bid uh, for Shakhtar, the next winger, Mukhello, Mudrick. The young lad has really done well after breaking out with a full force with Shakhtar Donetsk alongside Rash Kelly are also doing in Napoli. The two young lads are really doing well right now. So they are the talk of the town. Newcastle United are considering 50 million pounds bid for, <laughs> it's almost looking like uh, Ellie Haaland. Mm. When you look at the hairstyle mm. and even their faces. Yeah, well, he's, he's an exceptional player. Mm. He, has been, he has had he has a, a, a very wonderful season last season. I think this season has picked up where he left off. Um, there was serious talk of Arsenal during the transfer window. Unfortunately, I don't know how they were not able to get that deal across. And they would have gotten him on the cheap. But now that he's actually in the limelight and he's there, you see 50 million being quoted as mm -hmm. that. So he's not going to be the kind of deal that Napoli got on Quaratelia because that was a steal, really, considering what he's actually playing for them now. So I think um, he's, an ex he's a very good player. 50 million, a bit excessive, but going by today's market, I think... Um, is it, worth it. it. Yes, at, at the end of the day, if he can be able to keep on giving the kind of output that he has given last season and at the beginning of the season, then I think it's, it's actually a worthwhile deal. Well, while we look at that, you talk about a team from Spain, Real Madrid are right now looking at getting Jude Bellingham from Borussia Dortmund because uh, that's their top target for next summer transfer window. The young lad has been placed at like 130 million euros on his head as uh, that's the, type, that's the amount of money that uh, Borussia Dortmund could be and actually any from any club that wants to buy a Jude. But right now, Liverpool, Manchester United are all trailing the young lad. But it could be that Los Blancos, Real Madrid could be the one to get him because they are targeting him for the summer. Yes, well, the allure of um, probably going there to uh, having a very big chance of winning the Champions League could actually make the difference because you know Real Madrid, that's, the, it's, that's their forte. No matter how bad they're playing, no matter how poor their domestic form is, they still manage to do something <laughs> worthwhile in Europe. So I think that is the, that's one of the attractions that could be. Um, Jude Bellingham going to Real Madrid, yeah, it could be a good move at the end of the day, but um, I think it's a risk that he might not want to take. And um, being the player that he is, coming from where he's coming from, I think he'll prefer a Premier League move 
over Los Blancos at this particular point in time. He's a very good player. Um, I think a, a little bit too overhyped because of him being from English. England. Exactly, but mm -hmm. still, he's, he's actually a very good player. And um, it would be a good one for Madrid if they could actually get him. Because if you can see, if you look at what Real Madrid are actually doing, they're phasing out the old guard. They're bringing in new, exciting young, young players. players. Exactly. They're bringing in and new, And guys will last players. for a long exactly. time. Exactly, and they can mm -hmm. actually build a dynasty in, in Real Madrid. So I think if they can get him, I think it would be a good one for them. But I, it, will be, it will be difficult. Before we wrap it up, something actually happened over there at the World Cup. That is basketball, women World Cup where the team that uh, replaced Nigeria at the World Cup, that's Mali. They fought and FIBA are investigating fight between Mali players. The Malian players, uh, the women, they actually punched themselves. Can you imagine this? Uh, <laughs> that is... After they lost against Serbia, mm. they, lost all the, they have lost four matches now, four games, mm. Japan, Serbia and all that. But they, 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 were, they were there to do press conference, and the next thing it was worse goals. Yes, unfortunately, when you see players screaming and shouting at each other and even cursing each other on the, on, on the field, you know that that is, is the heat of the moment, is the adrenaline. Is, uh, yeah, but, but, not but, when but in a press, press conference, conference. I mean, whatever differences you have, you can't wait till after the press conference to go and sort <laughs> it out yourself. It shows a total lack of discipline and is really a, a big embarrassment for the nation. And I don't think the ladies did themselves any favors by doing that. They didn't do themselves any favor. Right now, FIBA will be looking at the measures that they'll be missing out of the two of them for the fact that they did that at the press conference after losing out to Serbia. Well, Mali replaced Nigeria. Uh, the uh, World Cup, talking about uh, women World Cup basketball, but now they lost four matches in a row and they are fighting. Well, we just hope that uh, we get our own right here at home. Mm. Nigerian basketball has so painful the Tigers and all there, and this maybe wouldn't have happened if we were there. We just have to go now on 360 Sport. It's been a wonderful time with uh, Olua Ferrami Omoni from Lagos and also Ibrahim Yusuf who has been with us in the studio. Good Thanks one. for having me, Adini. Always a pleasure. Good one. I hope you won't fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll probably start our own right no, now. No, no, we'll do that. I'm not a fighter. Good <laughs> one. I just let you have some feel of a uh, joke there. We have to go. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.